Well, the microphone seems to be working again. So, anyways, uh, it is 22 hours and 44 minutes into the 12th day of March, uh, 2021. Which reminds me, I've got to offload some data from the internet uh, from a particular satellite. Or actually, two satellites. Uh, it was uh, overdue. I forgot to do it again. Uh, sometimes I forget to do things. And I'm having breakfast, uh, getting my breakfast ready for today. Uh, that's the way things go. Uh, I'm just now getting up, moving uh, from one uh, research desk to the other. Uh, that's going to be in the meeting room. I did some fixing up in the meeting room uh, yesterday, uh, which was actually, it was still earlier today. <laughs> but I just, uh, I went, I did the work. I finished around 7 o'clock in the morning, went to bed. Ooh. And then just now got up, so. And I'll be having some bread for dinner, for breakfast. Uh, I'll get, some, uh, get another piece of bread, just give me a minute. We are already in the early, this is the other bread. It's a spice bread. I have the spice bed first and then I have the sesame seed ones after that. It's it's the early beginnings. Usually there's there's a two week sort of, uh, you call, call it um, a two week uh, introduction to vlog pas uh, that's for, for Pascha, the, the preparation for Pascha. And so that's what we're doing now, and uh, it requires a shift in diet. Uh, this is part of the, uh, uh, what you would call a, uh, a meditation diet. And I seem to enjoy it. It's, 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 for, it for me, it's, it's 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 pretty good. I I like I like it. I have enough food because I cook because I bake. I have enough uh, food that it doesn't really necessarily mean to be a chore in order to uh, to do this particular type of meditation. So. It just means a shift in palate, a shift in diet. Uh, there is some uh, reduction in energy, but not much. Uh, things can be adjusted uh, uh, to to compensate for that. So, uh, not much of an issue. I'm going to go put this back where it was. I have a pantry shelf outside that's... Uh, outside of here where the laundry room is uh, where I store my breads because it seems to be that's the place where the breads uh, stay fresher longer so uh, I'm gonna go put that there and I'll come back although this isn't the first vlog for the day of the of the of the 12th we had uh, seen these earlier uh, these are the uh, cameras that came in so this is going to be an in interesting interesting uh, experiment these are uh, 1080p cameras full length 1080p uh, AVI which is a good thing um, Lithium. Hmm. I guess this has to be wired to the device. So, will be interesting to see how it use how this actually functions. More than likely. More than likely, what I think will probably end up happening 
is it will be uh, powered through USB uh, through one of the uh, OTG ports. And that was kind of determine how this all functions and ends up working out. But anyways, uh, on, to an, on to the rest of the day. Although I think I probably will have to end up going to the bathroom first. So anyways, we'll see you then. Well, just a few minutes later and uh, we were cut short by a call of nature. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I answered the call. Uh, it was apparently it was long distance. Uh, anyways, it is uh, uh, now 23 hours and 7 minutes into the day of March uh, 12th, uh, 2021. And this, you know, we do the date, time, and date and time thing here because it's a, it's a log. It's a, it's a vlog. It's our journal, and we write the time and date in when, whenever we have an entry. We would take our notes. This is part of our note system, and uh, uh, we put it in as such. And Hopefully now, because I've got a system set up here, a tripod system, tripod system set up here, it'll be easier to vlog. And now this is the second camera. So I've got two cameras so I can vlog in more places. And hopefully uh, I'll be, because I will be doing more work in the kitchen, uh, we can uh, vlog in the kitchen. The way other vloggers do, they spend a lot, well, many, many vloggers spend a lot, a lot of time in the kitchen. So uh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> we now have a vlog set up in the kitchen. We have a vlog set up in the music room, um, the, the music studio. So uh, we have a number of places we can vlog on. We will be getting back to uh, vlogging because uh, it's March. The weather, weather's starting to improve. I would say by April 1st, we'll be back on the scooter again. So we'll be adding the scooter vlogs back in. Uh, so there'll be more variety. And, oh, don't forget, I've also now hooked up and set up so I can vlog while I'm in bed. I found the app, and this is the app that I'm using now. It has a uh, ability that when we're filming this way, we're fil filming in uh, uh, with the screen. I'm looking at the screen right now uh, for the uh, smartphone. Or I, I, I people call it smart. It's not a smartphone. It's actually a device. It's it's actually a, comp a small computer. It's like a laptop. Uh, that can do phone calls. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's not really a phone. It's, people call it a phone for convenience, but the thing is, it really is a computer. Um, and uh, because of Linux, you don't simply call it a computer because the computer system itself can be a number of devices linked together. So this is simply a device. Um, and... The app, what it does is it turns the screen all, if in a darkened area, it turns the screen all white. And so the screen that I'm looking at now becomes all white. It becomes the actual uh, light for the scene. That's what I have in the media room is I have a large, uh, a 24-inch monitor uh, that provides the light for, the, uh, for filming there, for doing the vlogs there. So uh, we do have a number of options. Uh, I will be getting as we do get in, into the uh, into the meditate the, the fasting meditation. I will be talking more about that uh, as a meditation uh, as part of uh, gnosis. And because I said before, it's part of cultural anthropology. This is how you can study cultures. We'll be doing a bit of that in there because my diet is an, is a Pan Asian diet, and that Pan Asian diet is very very old. Well, here we are on the 13th of March. It's just about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And the 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 choice to stay sleeping to take some extra time off uh, resulted in no time off because the dreams were rather vivid, were rather, in many cases, puzzling. It's the a dream that really didn't have any form of resolution to it. It still doesn't have a resolution to it. That is about choices and consequences. 
and how different events within people's lives shape who they become. Uh, and how their choices affect other people as well. And you begin to understand how evil works its way into the world. It's not necessarily... <laughs> We tend to blame uh, demons for everything. Oh, these are our demons. Well, a large chunk of the behavior isn't the demon in itself, but rather our own behavior influenced by the demon. And this is something that uh, needs to be sort of taken into consideration. When you're moving from neutral gin in, into the state of forgiveness, well, how do you forgive people for different things they've done uh, when in many cases the seed for what they have done was planted long ago as a child when someone came in and did something evil to them. That kind of shaped the path. And this is sort of how the dream kind of worked itself out. Uh, it was very mechanical, very pro uh, very process-oriented. Oh. It was about strictness and regimentation. It Involved two different groups of people, two different styles of people. Uh, and choices uh, that uh, had, had undesirable consequences to them. Even though the choices had to be made, it, it brought home certain realities. And uh, this includes... That there are people in this world who are so badly broken, it's almost impossible to repair them. And this is sort of the situation we're dealing with now, is how many people are actually broken. How many people are in situations that they really can't get themselves out of. And uh, there really aren't any other options. And this is why the dream really doesn't have a conclusion. Because I don't know what the answer is. I really don't know what the answer is. I was patient. I was observant. I tried to do the best I can, could. But it's still at the end, there was no resolution, no solution. And I saw things that I sort of understood from a, a different perspective. How people end up where they end up, why they end up where they end up. Uh, it just, uh, it's something I'm going to have to think about, uh, for much of the day today, much of, uh, actually, it's going to take me a while to sort of process through, uh, what I've experienced, even though things are indeed moving along here, um, it's still a complex issue, and, it doesn't seem to want to go away or end easily. So, but again, I realize I'm on the path again. I'm I, I am moving along the path further, and this is uh, uh, part of being on the path. the The points where you get to rest uh, are the positions of particular note, and right now. I've left a, a, a position of note, that's the title of bishop, that is the point where neutral jinn and the meditation became all day long, it's, it, it moved from within my dreams to, to outside my dreams, so the two worlds united uh, to a certain degree, but now it's moving along the path to see what's further on down the road, and because I really don't know what's down the road, maybe this is... Uh, some of the source of the anxiety, but again, this, these uh, uh, episodes uh, weren't about that. They were simply about the consequences of choices. There's the bus! Well, it is 23 hours 
Uh, well, yeah, 23 hours and 10 minutes into the uh, 13th day of March, uh, 2021. It's Saturday. I'm back here at my office, uh, back here in the media room research desk because, uh, well, I don't have a ride into church tomorrow, so there will be, I'll be doing the service at home. I'll be able to do it here. I do have a miniature altar set up, uh, so I do have that place I can go and sort of... Uh, and do the meditation prayers uh, myself, uh, but it is it, the 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 days are getting better in terms of my overall functionality. Uh, even though I am knocked out, I am sort of in a sleep deprivation mode. Uh, you saw me earlier when I was uh, vlogging from my bed that uh, I couldn't always keep my eyes open, and that's sort of the case right now. Even though I'm gonna sit down, have something to eat, and uh, go through the YouTube stroll the way I usually do. It is amazing to see how, and this is from watching, after watching the show, Yes Prime Minister and Yes Minister, how politics plays into the average world, and that most people only see the service. This is looking at uh, some of the posts I'm seeing from, from uh, Instagram and eventually on TikTok as well. Uh, I think the worst the social app is Snapchat. That's where a lot of the work is going on right now. A lot of the propaganda is up there. As it, it, it's, it, give an example. Amnesty International was talking about uh, uh, all the different people who are downtrodden and all the different human rights abuses. And where are they? They're in the places that the United States and, and the West want to start a war. Why don't they mention other places? where There are a lot of other places that have problems as well, but they're not looking at the places... Other places that have problems are simply looking at the areas, when they mention the areas, that uh, uh, the West wants to start a war in. And we are, now with Biden, we're back to war again. This is this is where we're heading. We're heading back to war. And right now, they're testing around, they're feeling well for where the next war is going to be. In the next year or so, there's going to be another war. The United States will be back at war. It already is moving back into Syria. It's moving back into Iraq. Uh, and it's getting in more and more of these sort of fights and skirmishes. I mean, how many more, but again, most Americans will never know this because they don't particularly watch the news, nor does the news ever bring this up. Well, how many, how many American bodies are coming back and as, as, are coming back from these sort of go, these missions, these, these, uh, excursions? And of course, they're not going to say, oh, they died in vain or they died for stupid reasons. No, they're the heroes. But who invited them in? Nobody did. They invaded. They went into regime change. They went into change because, they, because someone said the, that these these leaders were bad. So they went in, they changed the leader, and uh, they took the place over. They killed a bunch of in, innocent civilians. And then, oh, wow. Well. So they're the invaders. They're the aggressors. And then, but they're saying, oh, but they don't like us because of our because of our freedom. No, they don't like us because we invaded them. Speaking as sort of an American or as a, as a Westerner, that's that's the we here. Uh, you do play roles as we have go through these discussions. You play the role. So we are the ones who invaded. Yet we are the ones on the news, on the media, who are saying, "Oh, they don't like us because of our freedom." No. But the thing is, that most people will never question that narrative. They'll believe everything and anything the government tells them. Look at the number of people walking around wearing masks. No proof was ever given. Nothing ever was ever. Nothing ever came out scientifically about about uh, the chronic gas or anything like that. It was all simply pushed by the media. You had a few top doctors, but the thing look at who they were. Do a background research. Are they actually scientists? Were they involved in the research? And you'll find out in most cases they weren't. Ask the question, who's paying them? Who is paying Fauci? Who is paying the bills for all these, like, let's say let's say Harvard, uh, John Hopkins? Did you know Bloomberg was funding them? Do you know Microsoft? Bill Gates was funding John Hopkins. They're major funders. They're, their schools are there. Did you know this? The, 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 these people, Bill Gates and, and, and 
and what's his name, uh, Bloomberg were, were supporting, were, were part of the vaccine rollout. They were the ones who got the, the sort of the waiver, the protection, the immunity from any form of prosecution or lawsuits. They're, they're making money off of this stuff. They're making money off the vaccine. Did you understand this? So then when you understand when, when these people, these from, from Harvard and John Hopkins, come out, do you understand that they're on the payroll of Bill Gates and uh, Bloomberg? And you go to the schools and you go to the, 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 the research departments and, and who are the research departments getting most of their money from? Oh, they're getting it from Microsoft's, uh, you know, the Bill Gates, the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They're getting it from the, uh, of course, now because uh, uh, Warren Buffett gave his money to Bill, uh, to, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, you also have Bloomberg thinking of doing the same thing, but he's in a league of his own. But he's also getting another billionaire. They're all, and they all support Biden. But the thing is that so when you look at the scientific, the actual scientific evidence, the independent scientific evidence, which there is none, there is no independent scientific investigation going on. There's no research that's being in, that is actually independent of any of these funding uh, choices. So they're all in conflict of interest. They all have a compromise. That means that they're no longer scientific. And this is the same thing with the CDC. The CDC, you, you can, just because something is, is not specifically scientific, doesn't necessarily mean you can't do the digging, you can't do the research and develop a, and pull a scientific observation out of it. You can do, that's what I do. Uh, but the thing is, right now, there is no scientific uh, investigation going on. There is no scientific value to what's being put out. And people are just fighting back and forth on either side, arguing over status. And because the large chunk of the reason is that a large chunk of the, of the work done in virology is uh, called the dual use of research, dual use research of concern. In other words, it's, it has military applications, and so therefore it's uh, classified and restricted from publication. So it never makes it into even the peer-reviewed journals. But again, most, most people just don't seem to care, don't seem to want to be getting into that. As soon as you start, start meeting, many, mentioning some of the background research, well, that's too much for me. They don't go check. I mean, all you have to do is look, oh, we'll go back to the whole argument on the Bobby Soxers. It was a very simple thing to do. Go do a history. You can do this. You well, easily do it on Google. Go on Google. Do a history by the decade of teenage fashions. And you will find in the 1950s there will be a fashion called the Bobby Soxers. Easy thing to do. And you will see that it's not connected to Shirley Temple. But you look at the definition. Even from Webster's Dictionary from from the Oxford English Dictionary, we all cut and paste from each other. And what is it? They've completely missed the, the, the history of the Bobby Soxers. They have it with Frank Sinatra and Shirley Temple. And that's not, it's not the Bobby Soxers. The Bobby Soxers were, were the teenagers of the 1950s. And he, he, he very simple, very easy uh, search of, of, of fashion history for teenagers. We're looking specifically at teenagers. You'll find the Bobby Soxers in the 1950s. Took me less than two hours to do. Because I went in further to things. I wanted to see what, what, what designs were where. Uh, I talked to people who were around at that time. They're, they're older now. They're significant. And the thing is, they told me the different hairstyles. And I went out and looked at the different hairstyles, looked at the different styles that were around, and was able to find names for all these particular styles. And found that the Bobby Soxers was there in the 1950s. Was it a difficult thing to do? But yet, not even in so-called reputable books and so-called research environments do you see this. So we have a serious problem of false information, mistaken information, walking around as reality. This is the narrative. This is Edward Bernays. This is... Uh, uh, Dr. Phillips and Barlow, this is the Stanford Prison Experiment. This is uh, Ed, uh, Stanley Milgram and the Milgram Experiment. This is what's going on. 